Okay, so, we have been looking at this algorithm A C 1 and as we will see this is the first of the algorithms that we will look at for arc consistency. Uh, and the algorithm basically said that for each pair x i x j of variables that participate in a constraint or okay, that participate in a constraint do the following make a call for the first variable with respect to the second variable and the relation r i j and then make a call for the second variable with respect to the first variable for the same relation we will use the same notation for that we will assume that 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 both sides both it is a symmetric kind of a relation that if x a b is present then b a will also be present and so on. So, I am not writing r j i explicitly here essentially and we have to do this. So, let us assume that we have a small constraint satisfaction problem in which there are uh, three variables again let us call them x y and z and let us say that this is how uh, the matching diagram looks that I have a value from this one to a value here, this is a value here. I am just constructing a slightly contrived example and let me add another case just to show that something is. So, there is no distinction between the blue and the red except for the fact that you will see that the blue ones will survive and the red ones will not survive essentially in this situation. The, the, the situation is like this here. So, if you, so the, the the three blue edges are you can see are consistent in the sense that the three values always have a connected value in, in each of the other domains. So, we are talking about three relations now r x y, r y z and r z, but if we if I just make one one call. So, what are those three one calls that I am talking about? Uh, so, the red calls will be or the calls that I am interested in will be uh, x with respect to y, y with respect to x, uh, let us say in this particular order y with respect to z, z with respect to y and z with respect to x and x with respect to z. Okay. So, we have this three pairs of variables, there are this, this particular example has three constraints between each of the three variables. So, when I do x with respect to y, what will happen? Uh, the first all 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 four values have a matching value in this essentially and then when I do y with respect to x with y with respect to x then again I find that all four values have a matching value to this. Essentially. But now if I do the next is y with respect to z. So, there are four values here and, and every four has a value in z and likewise z with respect to y has a value for this. Basically. Only when I come to z with respect to x, okay, in this case there is a first delete. And what is being deleted is this particular value because there is no matching value in x essentially. And then when I call x with respect to z, 
I will get my second delete. Let me use a star here. So, this will be the one that will be deleted. So, I have finished one round essentially. Now, is this one round enough? That is a question we were asking and you can see that it is not the case that it, it is enough because now you can see that. So, what should I should I use the word orphaned? this particular node. So, once you delete that start value, then this particular value in y which I have shown with the black arrow does not have a matching value in x. So, ideally it is not now y is no longer r cons consistent with respect to x essentially. When I have deleted the first value, it has likewise made the corresponding this thing orphan essentially. Now, y is not are consistent with respect to z essentially. So, after the first delete y not a c with respect to z and after the second delete y is not a c with respect to z essentially. So, I, I have done one round of every pair of variables in both directions, but I end up with a network which is not arc consistent. So, which means I must do some things again. So, the simplest thing to do again is what AC1 does. What AC1 does is that it pulls this whole thing into a loop and it says until no domain changes. So, in our example what has changed? The domain of x has changed and the domain of z has changed. We have deleted one value in this example from the domain of x which is marked by the star and we have deleted one value uh, from the domain of z which also let me mark by a star. Essentially. So, these two values have gone or let me circle them as I was doing earlier. Now, two domains have changed and so I am not sure that my system is going to be r consistent or not. Now, it is not necessary that deleting a value makes the makes a uh, edge r consistent. So, the two orphan values which uh, let me draw a square around them here uh, are both in this example in, in the domain of y, they became not a c because they were connected only to one value in the other domain and that value got deleted essentially. So, when we look at the next algorithm, we will try to basically propagate this change, but in this version of the algorithm A c 1, we will just do a brute force approach. We say okay, if something has changed, just do the whole thing all over again essentially. And of course, it will work, eventually it will work. So, if you follow this example to completion, then you will see that all the red lines will get deleted. Uh, so, we are assuming that the line will get deleted when a node at the edge of that line gets deleted and only the three blue nodes and, and the three blue lines will remain and that network will be r consistent essentially, but it will take a bit of an effort to, to arrive at that essentially. This algorithm AC1 is brute force, it simply says until no domain has changed essentially. What is the worst case complexity of this algorithm and whenever whenever we are talking about complexity we will always talk about worst case complexities. Again remember that there are n variables in general each variable has k values and there are e edges essentially. Okay. Now, if you remember the complexity of revise is this order k square this is order k square right and for each pair of variables which means there are e edges. In the constraint graph there are e edges and therefore, you will do e into 2 into 
order k square. So, the complexity of one cycle here is order e k square. You are calling k square which is revised and you are calling, calling it 2 e times essentially. For each edge you are calling it twice essentially. But 2 of us as you know we ignore when you are writing complexity. So, it is order e k square. Now, how many cycles will happen essentially in this in the worst case. Now, it turns out if I had not drawn the blue blue triangle, if I had only drawn the red triangle, then you can see that every variable, every value would have got deleted. And in fact, the network would have become, uh, all the domains would have become empty, if those blue cycles, blue things were not there. So, this is something that I should mention, whenever you are implementing these algorithms, if at any point any domain becomes empty, you can just terminate it and say that there is no solution. Because the fact that a domain has become empty simply means that you cannot give a value to that variable and which means you cannot have a solution. But in the worst case, all the values are going to get deleted. So, how many values are there? n into k values, n variables and k values. So, worst case meaning in the wrong, the worst possible order that you can choose as you can see in this example they will get deleted in uh, and in, in every cycle only one value will get deleted and therefore, you will need n into k cycles and therefore, complexity of this is order uh, n e k cube. Hmm? Because n k cycles, again in the worst case, and why n k cycles? Because in each cycle one value is getting deleted and there are n, n into k values. So, this is the complexity of a c 1 essentially. So, let us look at the improvement upon this and this algorithm for some reason is called a c 3, because there was proposed an algorithm at some point called a c 2, but it turned out to be too close to a c 3 and therefore, we never study a c 2. Some people say that the Wall's algorithm that we talked about uh, in Huffman closed labeling uh, is actually a version of A C 2 or A C 3 essentially. Okay, so, what do we want to do in A C 3? So, let me just go back to the previous diagram and we saw that in the first two deletes that we made here, which was in the cycle of z making z consistent with x and x consistent with z, with respect to z, we deleted two values from the domain of variable y and it is only that is what is getting threatened, that because the values that we dominated, the, the values that we deleted from the domain of y, are they making some other variable in other, other variable inconsistent. So, we need to only worry about that essentially. And for example, at the end of this cycle at least, we have not deleted any value from x or z. So, whatever consistency that was existing between x and z is not going to change. The only thing that is going to change is the consistency between y and something else. Some other variable may have become inconsistent with respect to y because I have deleted a value from y and that is what we should worry about essentially. And that is what this algorithm A C 3 does. And Essentially, what it does is that it maintains a queue of uh, pairs so for every pair of variables x i x j that participates as before in a constraint which means e pairs, because there are e edges in the constraint graph, you update the queue, you start with an empty queue. So, somewhere you must say it is an empty queue or you can use a queue notation. This thing. Or let me 
use a different notation because Dexter has used a set notation and I am somehow not comfortable with queues and sets being talked about in the same breath because a queue is basically an ordered set. So, I will just say n q the pair x i x j and then n q does it have two u e's or one u? I always get confused between spellings x j comma x i. So, there is an initial cycle in which I add all pairs uh, this is exactly like we did in a c 1 that you consider all pairs of it in c, but now we are going to maintain a q essentially hmm? and then we are going to make calls to device. So, let us say something like this uh, we get x i x j out So, I will use this notation that you are just dequeuing the queue and taking out the first element from that which is x i and x j which, which stands which, which is equivalent to saying that you are removing it from the queue essentially and now you are going to handle this essentially. Then I will call revise with domain i domain j and r i j again. So, again I will end up making 2 into e calls to revise in the first cycle exactly like we did earlier each is each each with uh, a cost of k square essentially. But now we do the following that only if something has changed what can change here d i can change here if d i has changed then add those variables which are related to x i essentially to the q that is all we will do. So, in the previous example that we saw if in this example everything is related to everything else. So, it does not sound so interesting, but supposing it was a, a less connected graph there were many variables and there were fewer connections. Then if I change the uh, yeah. domain y I will only worried about the those variables which are related to y and I will put them in a queue essentially. So, that is the basic idea behind uh, this thing. So, if revise if d i has changed then for each what should I say i j k for each x k that is to x i I must n q that variable essentially. Okay. And where k is not equal to j and a is not equal to i actually. Hmm. So, we do not want to talk about that variable. I will say n q I should have written this here anyway. X k with respect to x i because the variable x i or domain of d i has changed. I just want to make sure that all related variables are still consistent. So, basically I put it in the queue uh, x k x i and so at some point in due course of time that will also be looked at again. So, again the revise to x k x i will be make essentially. So, notice that I did not make two specific calls to revise because the n q was done twice essentially. Hmm. So, we did n q x i x j and x j x i 
So, they will eventually come out one by one in the queue and each will get revised essentially. And every time we revise a variable, then we look for everything that is connected to that and make a call to revise to that essentially. And this is the algorithm uh, and we put this in a loop as before uh, and till the queue becomes empty essentially. Okay, so, again now we want to talk about the complexity of AC 3. Is it better than AC 1? What does the intuition say? It is better because uh, you are only adding to the queue those variables which are related to a domain which has changed essentially. Whereas, in AC 1 you said do everything all over again for all pairs of variables do everything all over again. So, supposing we have now n variables here and only one value has changed let us say d y in this case as we saw. Then we will only take those variables which are connected to y and include them. So, we look at only a small subset of variables. Then if they result in a change, we look at another small subset and so on and so forth essentially. Hmm. So, what is the complexity of this? Uh, uh, again, you can see that this one has the same complexity order k square uh, and how many times will this the the first time when we do, we will do a e n queues essentially or two e n queues essentially, where e is the number of edges. Uh, so, for both sides we will make uh, add one element, one pair to the queue. So, th so, that we will eventually get ignored essentially. The question we want to ask is, what is the worst case complexity of this algorithm, which means how many times can you add a pair to the queue? pair of variables. Remember, we are dealing at the granularity of the variables level essentially. In fact, the next algorithm that we will see, which will be in the next class, we will look at the granularity as a uh, value level essentially. So, if a value has changed, is that value changing another value? Now, that is a more sophisticated algorithm, it requires more sophisticated data structures. We will see that later, but here we are talking about a set of values essentially. So, each pair can be enqueued how many times? Each, so supposing I am doing x k with respect to x y or x 3 with respect to x 1, how many times will I add this to the queue? At the most k times, right? Because you know only k times that value will, will get changed essentially. And there are e edges essentially. Hmm? So, this whole thing will be done at most e k times. order e k times, hmm? because there are e edges and you are deleting one element one at a time. So, what is happening here? You can see that essentially we are going to be following the, the, the propagation essentially. So, if I, if I go back to the previous example, uh, so let us let's, let's write the complexity. So, basically it is a product of these two things. So, the complexity is order e k cube essentially. So, let me go back to the previous example, which I had drawn here. So, essentially you have a network like this. So, let us let us let me So, when I do x with respect to y, nothing will change. When I do y with respect to x, nothing will change. When I do y with respect to z, nothing will change. This is z. And when I do z with respect to y, sorry, when I do y with respect to z, 
this value will change, this value will get deleted essentially. Then when I do z with respect to x, nothing will change, when I do x with respect to z, then this value will change. So, in the first cycle you can see that there are two values which have changed. Then and these two values if you if you see this uh, graph so to speak, it is basically a linear graph uh, where which has two end points, one is in x and the other one is in y and the two elements of the two end points have got deleted in this first cycle. In the second cycle the next two endpoints will get deleted in the third cycle, the third two endpoints, and so on and so forth. So, we will do essentially E k times in the worst case essentially, because E is the number of edges in this end. So, the worst case of course, happens when everything gets deleted from the corresponding domains essentially. Okay, so, let us just do a recap of what we have done. Uh, we looked at the algorithm A c 1, which is a brute force algorithm, which says revise every variable with respect to every other variable. And if any domain has changed, then do this whole process all over again, every variable against every other variable. Now, that does not make sense because you know you are doing too much extra work. So, AC 1 says, AC 3 says that initially you revise every variable with every other variable, which is done by the two NQ statements that we have. But subsequently, if a only if a variable, if a domain has changed, you make look at the connected variables for that particular variable essentially. So, we are looking at the granularity of the variable level essentially. Now, you can see an example uh, let me just do a small example here. Hmm, so, I have x and I have y. Now, if I if I do this algorithm A C 1 or A C 3, it does not matter. The only thing that will happen in the end of the first cycle is that this one colored value will get deleted essentially. Hmm. But you can see that that deleting this value has not changed the consistency of y with respect to x. That is what A C 3 does. A C 3 says if I am deleting, if I am changing the domain of x, if I am changing d x, then call revise y with respect to x again essentially. Okay, that is what we are saying. If d i has changed, then for each x k that is related to x i, put that in a q and basically call a revise all over again to q essentially. Now, in this small example on the bottom left, you can see that after I have changed the domain of x, I have deleted one value. I as the variable y is still consistent with respect to x. Suppose assuming that you know there may be have been another variable which I had another value which I had deleted, but as a result of deletion of this particular value, the one in the uh, one in the shaded this thing here, the consistency of y with respect to x is not changing. A C 3 will still investigate this, it will still make a call for revise y with respect to x which means for every value of y it will look for every value, look for a value of x essentially. This is a kind of work which it does because it is looking at the level of a variable. In the next class when we see we look at this algorithm called A C 4, which will look at the level of values, which will say deleting this particular value is it changing something in some other variable and then we will try to follow the link. Yeah Stanley, yeah, yeah. you should have told me earlier. So, I will make the change here. The loop should be here. In fact, if I if I put the loop as original, then it it is become AC1 plus something extra. Essentially. Okay, so thanks for that. So this is the, the, the revised algorithm. The the loop is only that you just take out the next element from the queue essentially. So you do not want to enqueue all those things all over again essentially. Okay. So we will uh, meet in the next class and look at algorithm AC4, which requires a lot more of uh, bookkeeping. So, we need some nice data structures to handle that essentially. Here we only needed a queue I think. Okay, so, see you in the next class.